Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Hey there. So, oh, <laughs> so here we are <laughs> once again, ready to get started. However, we are also ready to get it, to get it done. Because, yeah, today I was honestly thinking that not many of you guys were going to connect. And we're about to see because, um, you know, it's it's really cool right now. Like, it's cool in the matter of... Um, ah. In the weather, you know, it's like a day for um for us to be like in PJs, having hot cocoa, and you know, not necessarily being here in classes. However, it's part of our desire, part of our um our our goal. So here we are, ready to continue practicing. Now, this evening, what do we have on storage? Well, we're going to see. I would like to get to create a few more exercises or a few more examples. Um, using the passive voice. I know that it's going to be hard, but I would love to have, you know, at least two more examples. Um, then we're going to talk about this topic about um, that relates to connecting ideas. Uh, and afterwards, we are going to um, discuss one of the topics that I think that um, everybody bilingual should know. And it's very useful for basically all my language, we say bilinguals, which is... Um, negative questions and tag questions. In my personal opinion, tag questions are one of my favorite features about English because um, they do exist in Spanish, but we don't use them as often as we do in English. So tag questions, I don't know. It's just something that, you know, I, I, I use basically all the time. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are going to find it as interesting as I do. And yeah. Basically, those are going to be the things that we are due to wrap up. However, before any of that happens, we are at the end of the week. So I would like to know if you guys have any questions or any um, any doubts regarding the platform or the activities that you have been performing these few um, past days. So any questions or doubts about the platform that you may have right now? You, you, could, you could open right now and we... we... <laughs> I'm going to ask later because I have some song. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had it. Oh, yeah. It is open. It is open. Oh, okay. But let me let me see. <laughs> okay. I don't know how I'm doing now. Yeah, I had it open since uh, the previous class. You know, I I I um I wanted to help those guys as well, so I had it open before. Um. So yeah, if you guys have you know questions about it, now is the time to ask them, and we're gonna get it solved if possible, of course, right now. So apart from that, I wanted to share tonight, um, you know, I wanted to be the one to share tonight, but at the end, I felt like I didn't really have the right. So I feel like I'm going to do it, you know, in time with one of you in um, coming classes. And uh, I feel like we also are running out of people already, you know, people with uh, speeches. Um, so tonight, we're going to be assigning for uh, next Monday because as far as I remember, we didn't have any assignments for today because last night we basically wrapped it up, you know, without having the um, the time to assign topics for today. Um, but yeah, there are many topics. There are many things coming up um, right now. For example, one of the things that, uh, well, the two topics, the two options that I have for tonight have to do with pros and cons about things. So we will see, you know, if uh, they get picked, if anyone would like to go ahead and work with them. If not, you know, they tried it. They tried it. It's not their fault. So, Lorena, do you have your questions ready? The, the first one is, uh, is a listening from 212. I don't know why I, ha I have tried with, in uh, in the first one is, is correct, taxi driver, but the second one in a department store. And okay. I... And... And it didn't accept me. Let's see, section two, number 12, 12. Right? Yeah. 212, oh yeah, it's a listening exercise. Let's see. Um. So, uh, what are the answers that you have, you said? The second one in a department store. Uh-huh. But it doesn't, it is incorrect. Okay. And painting see. houses. Let me see. I am going to see if I can um, listen to the audio here real quick while I talk to you guys as well. Um, so I can get 
uh, to the answers. The first Please. one is taxi driver, right? Yeah. Okay, so the first Correct. one works. Yeah. Okay, so maybe what's happening here is that we're missing a word. On the department store one, um, yeah, I think we should try department store clerk. Clerk mm. is like an like an agent. You know, when you talk about a clerk, it's normally like talking about an agent or someone who is in charge of doing something. So yeah, department store clerk. C C L E R K. Um. Yes, C L E R K. Yeah, that's uh -huh. right. Clerk. That's a clerk. All right. Uh, and on the third one, what's the option that you have? Sorry. I use uh, painting houses. Oh. I try I... paint paint houses, painting houses. I try with many things. So here um, we... is house painter. Uh huh. Here we will. Um, do... Yeah, we will. But do it, I can hear. The... Department uh -huh. store what? Clerk. Department store clerk. So can it's C, it? <laughs> C L E R K. I will send it to you guys. Clerk. So as I said, a clerk okay. is like an agent, you know, ah, someone yeah. who is in charge of doing something. Yeah. Clerk. I have done in the exercise 3.4. 3.4? On it. Okay. So uh Lorena, did it work for you? I'm just looking for another one. Then oh. then I'm going to what? Yeah, because I have more to ask. Okay. Aprovechemos hoy. <laughs> gratis. Okay, so 3.4. Um Leslie, what's the exercise, the exact exercise that you have doubts with? <laughs> All of them. Oh my. <laughs> All ready. Then. No, which which one? But I, I finished have, I... the other exercise, so that was okay. the only. Oh, yeah, because here we're talking. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, let's see then. So, the instruction is complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb in parentheses. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. No capital letters or periods are needed. Um, now, the examples is webcams used in the future to broadcast college classes. Now, the proper way to do it is webcams will be used in uh, future to broadcast college classes. That is the first one. Or we could use are going to be used. Yeah, will be used or are going to be used. Now we have on uh, number one, thousands of computers already infect by spyware. Now that's the problem. We are going to use have been infected. I don't know if you have tried that. Maybe. Ah, that's yeah. the reason I put on will be. Oh, okay. So here it would be have been infected. The problem is that we are supposed to follow all of the forms of passive that we have or all of the forms of, um, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of passive thing. So yeah, we were supposed to say have been infected, have been infected. Um, let's see. Uh, let me try, however. Let me try if it's right. Yeah, that one works. So yeah, have been infected. Now the next one, more freeware released. For will be released. Uh, will be released. Uh, uh -huh. More freeware um, released soon for kids, or for all kids of application. So it will be, will be released or is going to be released. Either of those two will be released or is going to be released. Either of those two is supposed to work here. Now we have thousands of blogs start on all sorts um, of topics every day. Now, here, if you guys remember, this is supposed to be like an active, like an ongoing thing. So it's going to be with present continuous. Therefore, the are answer being... uh -huh, are being started, are being started. So we're going to say thousands of blogs are being started on all sorts of topics every day. We have number four. Recently, more hotspots set up in small uh, towns. Now, how can we say set up in... Um... Sorry, 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 sorry. No, this is a perfect, a perfect thing. So yeah, have, have been, been, have been set, set up. up. Because we have at the beginning here, recently. So that means is... Uh, just finished uh, situation. It's something that has just been done. 
So it's going to have to be in the present perfect. So have been set up uh, in small towns. Number five, nowadays, teen chat rooms monitored by concerned parents. So nowadays, it means that it's something that is happening during these days. So once again, we come back to the present continuous form. It's going to be nowadays, teen chat rooms are being monitored are being monitored by concerned parents. So nowadays, teen chat rooms are being monitored by concerned parents. Um, Sorry, Leslie, are you following? Yeah. Oh, OK. okay. Uh, now we have number six. These days, podcasts downloaded by people of all ages. I think it's easy, right? You kind of get the geese now. It's uh when we mentioned these days is something that is happening right now. So once again, it's gonna be present continuous. So these days, podcasts are being downloaded, are being downloaded by people of all ages. Then we have some number seven. Soon viruses created that no security software can detect. So soon um viruses will be created, will be created or are going to be created that no security software can detect. So soon uh, viruses that will be created that no security software can detect. And then number eight and last we have webcams. Well, this one is actually a given because it was um, the example. Así que esta sí casi que sería imposible, ¿verdad? Que no la tengamos correcta. Pero igual, sería webcams will be used or are going to be used in the future to broadcast college classes. So I don't know. Did you get him, Leslie? Yeah, now yet. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh how about the rest of you guys? Uh any any other questions? Any other section where you would like um to get help? Oh, I have one pending here. Let me see. Sorry, Leslie, or, or when you said house painting, was painting with ING at the end? No, painter. House painter. Painter as, a, uh, profession. Okay. as okay. a profession. Yeah, house painter. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yes. it's a profession thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, mm -hmm. 4. 4.5? 5. Let's see. Yeah. 4 or 5 is supposed to be next week, but okay, let's, let's go get it. <laughs> Okay, uh, so it's the listening once again. We have the instructions. Listen to Samira, Alex, and Naomi talking about their occupations. What does each person do? So which are the ones that you need? All of them? No. Just for one. Let me see. I just need four point five. Just the second one. Because I, I heard business owner, but it doesn't accept me. Mm. Okay, so Alex, uh, with Alex, you can, well, of course, we, we have many options. This is great for those who like, you know, to have options. Um, so Alex is uh, a small owner, or oh, sorry, a small business owner. So that would be the way in which you can, um, you can type it down. You can do it full. You can do, for example, Alex is a small business owner. You can do a small business owner. Um, you can do he is a small business owner. So either of those options is going to work. So yeah, you can try with that. Um, the word that we were missing here was simply small because you said that you have already business owner. Yeah. So, yeah. Business owner and then small. Okay. Small. Let me see. This. Small business one. owner. One more. Minute. Small. Yeah, Alex is a small business owner. Yes. All right. And How about... is... mm -hmm. No, no. As as someone else, I have okay. another one. I'm I'm looking for that. That's okay. How about the rest of you guys? Uh, which ones are the ones that? Oh wait. Uh, let me go ahead and get these ones that I have pending. Um. So da, 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 da. let's see. It's one. Da, da, da. Hmm. I think I'm going to 2.2. 2. Let's go to 2.2. 2. That's the one that I happened in because, yeah, um, 
one point two, it will be it will take us too long. So we'll go we we'll go back to two point two. So in this case for two point two, let me see if I can get it. Here we go. Um, the ones that I need are, so in the first one for two point two. It is supposed to be has stolen. So has stolen. That is the one. for In the first one, uh, it would be a group of thieves steal. That's the verb. The dragon's eye ruby from the grand gallery. But here we will have to say has stolen. So a group of thieves has stolen. Then we have last night about 1 a.m. The alarm, it would be went off went off. So, aquí, eh, una vez más, es el tema en el que cada rato entramos, ¿verdad? La palabra off ya está en la, en la oración, así que solo debería ser el went, ¿sí? Pero, pues, la forma correcta o la forma que la plataforma quiere que lo coloquemos sería um, went off. Así que eh, la recomendación sería eso, ¿verdad? Poner went off. Um, so, yeah. Let me see. I will try to get the other ones and send them to you right now because if not, I'm going to forget again. So, yeah. Um, Lorena, ¿cuál es la otra que necesitaba? In 4.2, number 4, number 6. Okay, one second. I'll go back to that. Ah, uh, yeah, it's true. In the number 6, it's an error. It's a like ah, responsible. responsible. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it's a, that's Right. 4.2. Okay. One sec. So 4.2. Which one did you say? Number four, number six. All right. Number four, number six. Uh, we have a number four. Oh, wait. First the instruction. Rewrite the sentences with reduced cl uh, relative classes. Remember to use capital letters and periods. For example, anyone who dreams of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to um, do a lot of hard work. Now, here we have anyone dreaming of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. So all this happens with reduced um, relative classes is that we don't need to um, to use the, whatchamacallit, um, the who dreams or the, like, the third person there. We're going to go straight into using the gerund, and that is going to save us, you know, the, the work of using that version. So for number four, it will be people who are clever uh, or clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal, a criminal will make good detectives. So that's the original sentence. And the way in which we are supposed to create it is people clever enough to get, enough. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. So nah. people, I'm uh, sorry? It does, in that way, it doesn't work. It doesn't work? Nah. In my guess, yeah. People clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. Uh -huh. But no using clevering. Ah, okay. No, I use clever. I, no, I, I clever. use clevering. Oh, no. Okay. It's okay. clever enough. People okay. clever enough. All you do is just uh, take away uh, who are. That's basically what happens. You just oh, okay. take away who are. You just say people clever enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the number six. Number six. We have the original, which is someone who is responsible for a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling. Someone who is responsible for a larger staff has to be able to be creative uh, with scheduling. So we simply were simply due to say someone responsible for a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling. So basically that's the way in which we are supposed to um rewrite this sentence. Just taking away um who is. So once again it's the um the relation and the verb. So someone responsible for a larger staff has to be able to be creative um, with the scheduling. Okay, thanks. Is it ready now? Yeah. Okay. Then uh, let me see one second. I'm only going to send a few more answers because I um, 
this one's have been pending around here for a while. Um, so yeah, I need to get this done. One sec. Let's see. Um, so try to get, you know, if you guys need any others, of course, apart from the exams, because in the exams is relatively hard for me to um, actually help you. So yeah. But uh, if there are any other questions or the rest of you guys, maybe um, Gabby or someone else has a doubt about this or are you guys uh, relatively done with it? In the final exam, the number three. Can you help me please or no? We're gonna break the rules. <laughs> Just... Today, I, yeah, today I have been breaking the rules a lot. So if you guys see the news and you see that I'm, you know, they have an English teacher going to jail, it's, don't be surprised. <laughs> it doesn't die. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, one sec. Uh, it would be, which one, sorry? Letter, Third one. Letter what? Letter C. Three. No. In the final exam, three. This day's comma chat rooms by university to pause the student discussion. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. En que letra estamos, sorry. <laughs> in the final exam. I am in the final exam, but remember that it has different letters. So it's letter A, B, C, D, and E. Ah, uh, B. Oh, okay. So that's where I wanted to get. All right. So B. Um. Instructions, da, 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 da. you said these days, number three, right? Three these days, chat rooms by universities. Um, let's see, instructions. Complete the sentences with the passive of the verbs in parentheses. Just type in the verbs in its correct form. No capital letter or period is needed. Therefore, we have these days, chat rooms by universities to host the students' um, discussions. So use, and it would be are being used. So these days, chat rooms are being used by universities to host student discussions. That is the answer. But I did it and doesn't work. Are used or are used? Are being used. Are being are, used. Yeah. Are, mm -hmm. are being used. Are being used. Are being used. And yep, I can confirm that it works. Are being used. No, are being used. Uh huh. It doesn't work. Really? Are you typing down? Yes, the... it, it works. It works with are with you... the used past. Uh -huh. No. Okay. Ah. Why? Okay. Uh huh. Okay, uh, so here we have, uh, I have a problem with 1.2, number four, and number six. Number four is still pending. That's still in the air. So please don't Thank blame you, me. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Please don't blame me on number four because that one is still pending over there. But uh, number six, let's see if we can go back to that. Um, 1.2 and, uh, oh yeah, no, number three was the one that was pending. A ver, tenemos en el número cuatro, sería, it's uh, not unusual, well, the thing is, uh, an instruction, rewrite the sentences using infinitives or gerund phrases, remember to use capital letters and periods, so number four, it will have to be something, or the sentence is, um, it's not unusual in the US to address a professor by his or her first name. So it's something common. Yes, it is. It happens a lot. However, I don't know. I feel just so weird when uh, people do that. But still, it's part of their um, culture. Now, the answer should be in the U.S. Now, the problem here, I think it might be all the periods that this um, that this has. Because there is a ton of periods here. So I think I'll rather just send you um, the answer. Because uh, when you type U.S., you need to add all those periods there. So in the U.S., addressing a professor by his or her first name um, isn't unusual. And for number six is asking strangers if they are married is inappropriate in some countries. Now, 
we should have to rewrite it as following. In some countries, comma, it's inappropriate to ask strangers if they are married. So we're going to see this is the one. So there we have it. In some countries, it's inappropriate to ask strangers if they are married. Um, so yeah, basically that will have to be it. Um, let's see. Okay, so yeah, I think that's that's it. That wraps it up. Alrighty, so are those the questions, guys? No more questions. Oh, for now. Sorry, if you have if you had more questions, it's over because I already closed the platform. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. All right, so now let's get started with what concerns us. You're very welcome, Sandra. Which is for tonight, it's going to be, um, I think we're going to go right into connecting ideas because I don't want to spend much time, you know, with the passive. So let's go ahead into connecting ideas um, and um, see what's it, what it's all about. So we have it here, connecting ideas, formally. Now, these uh, expressions connect ideas in different ways. Put them in columns below, sometimes more than uh, one answer is possible. Now, we're not going to do the columns thing. What we're going to do is basically analyze when we are supposed to use each of these phrases. So I told you guys about it yesterday, about my um, Your speech. My, no, my academic writing class. <laughs> yeah, so that, that class, the academic writing class. And this was another of the things, you know, that I, I got to, to learn. Because I remember when I started learning English, I used to like listen to people say, however, nevertheless, furthermore, um, on the other hand, and I was like, why do they say that? Like, what, what does it mean? You know, um, but now it's like part of my lexicon, like all the time I am using words like this. Um, the one that I surprised myself using the most is on the other hand, like I say that very, very often, or in fact, maybe, but how then are we supposed to use all these phrases or these or, or all these words? Let's start with additionally. I think that one is one of the easiest ones. Um, how would you guys use additionally? Or in what examples can you place additionally? Or in what situations can you place additionally? I like I like color blue, white, and additional orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, yeah, that could be an example. Now, the problem with this is that normally they come in the middle of paragraphs. So it's not like in a in a in a, in a like in a simple sentence. They are normally used in the middle of paragraphs or at the beginning of paragraphs. Um so additionally, we'll have to be, for example, you're providing an explanation like how proposals are prepared. You know, it's like you talk mm -hmm. about the doll, you talk about the preparations, and then you say, additionally, people also make some cabbage recipe that they call um curtido and they also make um uh sauce a tomato sauce and so in that place is where you're going to put additionally to connect both things so it's okay. like they do this additionally they do that so additionally we'll be there in the middle um but like it's... also and also like also yeah but the thing is that and also is not accepted by the academy okay. and also is used by us we use and also a lot but the academy doesn't like and also the academy prefers um to have things like additionally um so once again we have this one as a result how can you guys um use as a result think about it as a professional thing okay it's not necessarily in a simple sentence we're talking about paragraphs we're talking about explanations so as a result, how can we use as a result? I think it's like a conclusion when you did a, an investigation. So Great. you said as a result. Okay, there we go. Yes. Um, for example, you can start the paragraph uh, with a simple phrase as to conclude and da -da 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 -da, you know, describe what is your conclusion. And at the end you can place or like we're getting close to the end or getting to the climax of this. You can say, and as a result, we have discovered that people prefer to use 
um toilet paper than um newspaper because it's softer you know it's like an investigation there so yeah it's as a result so as you said it will have to come to present or to introduce the conclusion of something or the final findings of something so as a result now these two are the same thing okay for instance and for example are the same thing and um once again these ones are going to be used to connect one thing to another as when, for example when you're saying <laughs> there you have it for example uh, when you're saying that um when people have some free time and some spare money they like to do fun activities for example going to the beach is very common amongst people who live near the coast you have their explanation right and then right there you can also replace for example by for instance once again saying um when people have some free time and spare money they like to do some fun activities for instance going to the beach is something very common amongst people who live near the coast so those two are basically the same thing and you can use them interchangeably now um in a more formal way instance is going to be um the one to go like if you're writing a paper if you're writing um a report maybe it will sound better if you say for instance because for example sounds too too burned out it's like too common so for instance it's going to be more recommended now how about furthermore how can you guys understand furthermore for their more it's a tricky one right so for their more is basically same thing as additionally however for their more is um used as a con like a contrast for example you are describing um how good it is for you to um to what to, to to travel abroad you know to go to a different country so you're following that idea it's nice for you and it, it has many benefits and now we have furthermore and, and and it will be very similar to saying additionally or um also which is more you know better known when you use also but yeah furthermore and then you can introduce ideas that are a contrast you can introduce ideas maybe that follow how but it is for your wallet when you go out. Like, furthermore, people have to spend tons of money. People have to be away from their family because they cannot take everyone on the trip. So, furthermore, can be used to introduce. However, it can be used the same way as additionally. You can, of course, follow the same idea. You know, it's like, furthermore, um, you get to experience the culture and how people actually live in their communities and stuff. Um, but you can also, as I said, you know, change a little the direction of the of the text and introduce ideas that are not necessarily following the same flow, but going in a little bit of a different direction. So furthermore, similar to additionally, but it has that little twist there. It now, is it goes at the beginning. At the beginning of a paragraph. Yes. Okay. Normally it will have to go at the beginning of a paragraph. How about indeed? Indeed. Okay, once again, indeed and in fact are similar. Indeed, in fact, and likewise. Those three are um, relatively similar because we can um, use indeed as to mark or as to state a fact, you know, something that Like in is... general? Mm... Not really. No, because in general, it's like, you know, in fact. mentioning something that is uh, like well known, that is commonly seen. So it's like in general, people do this and this and that. It's like a common practice. However, indeed, is going to be mentioned when there is something that is practical, something that is provable. So um, if somebody says, um, the teacher likes cats, I can say, yes, I do. I like them indeed. And there he is. 
<laughs> so <laughs> for she you? Hurt me. Yeah. So yeah, it's like uh I can say yes indeed. I like cat. That's that is a sim a simple use of it, of course. Um, but for example, in a in a longer text or in a in a paragraph, uh I can say like um indeed what let's say that it's it's a text about cats and how cats have been important for cultures and just start by indeed egyptians used to you know draw some cats around their toms and they saw the cats as a representation of a god and it's like you start explaining like where this fact or this idea that you're mentioning comes from and the same happens with in fact it's like i'm saying you know cats um have been very important <laughs> for um for cultures around the world and then you say in fact egyptians used to draw um figures of cats on their tombs and, and and all their um archaeological sites we can see pictures or uh, drawings of cats so it's basically the same thing indeed and in fact are going to be used as uh for example and for instance interchangeably when you are stating something that is practical, something that has proofs behind it. So, you know, I, I, we have all probably um, seen or read how Egyptians used to adore cats, and there are even some cat uh, races that are um, called Egyptians. So it's like something that is in the books. So that's when we're going to use indeed or in fact. Now, likewise, how do you guys consider that we use likewise? Ah, no, no crean, no se lo voy a explicar toda yo. ¿Cómo se dice likewise? ¿Cómo se usa likewise? Likewise. Likewise. Uh, I think, uh, I think they use when you connect some idea to other idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and you say likewise. Mm -hmm. yes. At the same? Uh. Um, or yes, 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 uh, as, as the same. Basically that, as you're saying, you know, following uh, in the same way, for example, in the same way. It's like, um, <laughs> so continuing with the, with the cats topic, um, <laughs> Egyptians used to adore cats. Likewise, Aztecas had a representation, blah, 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 blah. and likewise, you know, will have to be like a connection between the two, like um, saying um, in the same way or also in introducing an idea that follows like the same path. So yes, likewise is like a link between the ideas. So yeah, it's a uh, it's not that common because likewise is uh, has actually been disappearing in the last few years. People are stopping to use it, but it's um very useful in my opinion because yes, like likewise as I said establishes a link between two ideas or between um two fronts of information. Now we have. Nevertheless, nevertheless, how do you guys think that we use nevertheless? Like, but. Sorry? It's like when we use but. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's very similar to using but. Nevertheless, it's like um when you say in spite of, you know, in spite of, um, like saying, parents have given their kids everything that they had. Nevertheless, kids are still taking the easiest way on life and becoming streamers, TikTokers, and influencers. So it's like, you know, changing the whole thing. So yes, as you said, it's, like, it's very similar to saying but, because nevertheless, it's like it changes the whole perspective. It introduces an idea that has um, basically altered or has been altered by by somebody else so nevertheless and then we have on the other hand this one is easy i think that this one is 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 relatively well known it's like people use it commonly because on the other hand is basically you're explaining something you know about um what uh about the internet let's say it's like the internet is a dangerous place because it holds um, viruses, piracy, and content that is not appropriate for humans. So that's something, you know, that is bad about the internet. On the other hand, 
it helps people connect with their friends, family, and it brings them together. It also provides them spaces for information or education. So it's like, here we have something that is bad, but on the other hand, we have something that is good. So on the other hand, it's going to be basically that when you introduce ideas that are contrasting. So um, on the other hand, you know, we have something good, something bad, something um, sour, something um, sweet. So yeah, it's on the other hand. Similarly, similarly, it's very, very, very close to the use of likewise because um, similarly, it's basically the same thing. It's used when we want to establish a same or a relatively um, equal flow. It's like, you know, um, people who like to watch soccer um, have what? Have some conducts that are negative. Similarly, people who watch American football have this kind of conducts. So it's like, we're following the same path. You know, we're establishing a connection or establishing, once again, a link between the two ideas. It's something that they have in common. So it's like, for example, people who um, who watch soccer yell at the players. And if you say that um, similarly, people who watch um, American football do something like that, it's like, yes, they also yell at the players. So it's something that is similar. That it's basically equal between the two. And the last one, Therefore, when do you guys think that therefore is due to be used? Therefore. Like consequently. Uh -huh. for that reason, when you are like uh, finishing something. You are... Yes, consequently or for that reason. So therefore, um, it's like, let's say, um, me telling to my girlfriend, like, you, I remember when I first saw you wearing glasses and therefore I fell in love with you. So, you know, it's like as a result, it's like um, because of that, or as you said, for that reason. So yeah, therefore, something that happens because of something else. So therefore, it's like the um, the consequence that you have to live um, because of something else that has happened before. So yes, therefore. All right. Now, from these words, which ones have you guys used before? Which ones do you think that you have ever used? I think, for example, is the most common one. But apart from that, have you ever used in fact or indeed or as a result? Maybe as a result, yes. Okay. I haven't used, I have nevertheless, nevertheless. Nevertheless. Yeah, I haven't used that. Okay, or furthermore. Or furthermore. Yeah. Furthermore. Uh huh. Yeah. Or um well if one that for, is uh huh for instance too I, I would say I would use for example but for instance I don't like using for instance because I remember that my grammar teacher well he was my teacher basically like the whole degree but uh, um there was a teacher who will always say for instance and I hated it like I didn't I never <laughs> liked it because I was like. <laughs> Isn't it simpler to say, for example, and he was like, no, because that makes me different. I was like, okay, I respect that. But like, say, for example, because people don't know what, for instance, means. Uh, and he was like, but they need to find out. They need to learn. And I was like, okay. But I don't know. I just never, you know, never liked the, the idea of saying, for instance. Um, I did have to use it because I did have to use it. Um, one of the words that I started not liking, but then I sort of fell in love with was however because at the beginning that is it isn't included here but however is one that you use um you know to like explain something uh or like uh to like let people know that you're about to explain something so it's like when you're going to introduce um an idea that has some information that can be relevant and also can contrast what you said before. So it's like, um, you know, students have some great abilities to learn. However, they are not using those skills. So it's like, you know, there to like establish a connection. It is not fully positive. It is not fully negative. It's just like there. It's an explanation about why something might not be happening. 
So yeah, however, it's one of those words that, as I said, I started not liking. I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it. But then it was like, I understood how to use it. And I started using like all the time. So yeah, however, now these words, as I said, they're not very common. They're not words that you're going to use all the time. Um, but words like, in fact, probably it's something that, you know, you're going to need um, in a day-to-day -day thing. As for example, if you are saying, or somebody is saying that, um, yeah, Leslie was in charge of bringing the soda, so she didn't. And then if you want to reply in a intense way and with authority, you can say, in fact, I did. Or, or if you want to use indeed, indeed, it will have to be used at the end in that case. You will have to say, actually, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I did indeed. <laughs> That's a, a bit of a mouthful, but, you know, it works. So you can say something like that. Actually, I did indeed. So, yeah, but it's those words that you can use, but you're not going to use like all the time. But, um, yeah, but words like, as you said, furthermore, nevertheless, it's not going to be something useful um but okay let's move on i think there is no need for us to spend more time here and i wanted to get to here to the negative sentences or also the tag questions now these are the kinds of questions that are referred to as conversation starters okay so conversation starters are words, or I mean, are phrases or questions that you use to introduce a topic. And let's see, let's get the first one. Millions of people are addicted to the internet these days. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Now that's the opinion that somebody is sharing, right? So millions of people are addicted to the internet these days. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Now, from that point, you can start discussing with the people what do you think do you think it's it's weird that people are addicted to the internet do you think it's normal do you think it's um dangerous maybe for society that people are addicted to the internet so isn't it that at the end is what turns it into a question and what and what also turns it into a conversation starter when you say isn't it um now this one is also a way in which you normally express your feelings because um, let's say that you're trying something that is considered new. Um, like, what is something new here? The <sighs> maracuyá sauce from Pollo Campero. Have you guys ever tried it? Mm -hmm. have, have you guys? Yeah, it's yes? delicious. Huh? Okay, so there you have it. Your opinion is that it's delicious, right? So... If I, I, I do agree with that. Okay. To start, I do agree with that. I think it's delicious. But let's say that I did it. Let's state that I will, for example, not agree with that. And I will have to say something like, it's a bit sour, isn't it? So that at the end, it's introduced there just to let the other person uh, state their opinion. And that's why it's a debate or a conversation start. Because if I simply said, it's a bit sour that will only be taken as a comment. And you, as you know, someone who loves the maracuya sauce, um, you can say, I don't like you anymore because you don't like what I like. Uh, however, if I say, isn't it? I'm not going to talk to you right now. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> no, you don't even want to talk to me. However, I do love it with shrimps, with everything. It's like so tasty. But the thing is, when you say, isn't it at the end, it's like, you're allowing the other person to say no. You know, you're allowing the other or kind of asking the other person to share their perspective on it. So simply adding that tag, because we call that a tag, um, is going to provide that space. Now, on the other hand, we have the negative questions. Negative questions, what they do is that from the very beginning, they are stating something that I am against. Like, I consider that this is not possible, let's say. But at the end of it, it's going to turn into a question. And we can start debating. We can start discussing your and my opinion. An example here. 
wouldn't it be great if they could eliminate all spam from email? Oh, wait. The other thing is, yes, uh, with negatives, you can start talking about imaginary things. That is the other thing that you can do with ne negative questions. You can talk about imaginary things, things that are not available right now, or at least not to your concern or not to your knowledge, uh, but that you wish that existed. You know, and I say that because it's like maybe with the technology that we have nowadays, it's possible it's possible to uh, eliminate all spam. However, we don't know, or at least in my case, I don't know. But this is a way for you also to start a conversation. You can say something like, wouldn't it be great if there could be um, what? Free accounts with, um, como sería? with Atlas videos on YouTube. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if there were free accounts with Atlas um, videos on YouTube? And from that point, you guys can start sharing, you know, yes, it will be great. Or maybe you can say no, because people then will switch to those free accounts and now it will be crowded and the system will collapse. And, you know, we can start sharing our perspectives. Now, have you guys ever had problems with spam on emails? Do you find like, do you find that problematic thing, you know, having spam? Or you don't even know what spam is? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I have a spam problem. <laughs> like, I, I never check on the spam. I do think that it's weird. I don't know where it came from, because honestly, I don't know where it came from. But I do think it's weird. I have only been... um. I have only had problems with spam twice in my life. The first time was when I got the contract for the school that I had to go to work for in the US. Um, as I never had gotten an email from that account, my email understood that it was a spam, you know, that it was something that maybe someone was trying to sell or um, not important. And uh, I was kind of worried because I was supposed to sign the contract within three days. And as I was checking, like, on the important box, I never got anything. And then they told me, like, check on the spam. And when I checked on it, I basically only had, like, three hours left to sign the contract. So it was like, that's the only time that I remember that I got scared because one of my emails went to spam. But I don't know. Normally, I just don't even pay attention to the spam, you know. So I don't feel like it's something that important. Um, but people who, like, use their email all the time maybe for them it's a problem maybe for them it's something that they would like to solve but now going back into these negative questions we have another example don't you find it almost impossible to avoid pop-up ads so once again don't you find it almost impossible to avoid pop-up ads and then the, per the other person can say like yeah i don't like it a lot like i um uh, you know i hate it when i'm watch trying to watch a video and then all these ads start popping up on my screen and I have 20 ads and I just cannot close any of them. So, you know, from that point, you can... A ver, esas son casi como esas preguntas o, um, o frases que a veces se dicen cuando... ¿Cómo es que se dice? Cuando uno empieza a... Ah, se me olvidó, con mis hermanas a cada rato decimos eso. Pero es como tener conversaciones así bien, bien psicodélicas, bien abiertas. De random. Ajá, uh -huh. so it's like a random, but ah, se me olvidó. Pero bueno, so it's like, you know, those, those um, dawn kind of conversations. When you're falling asleep, but you, see, you still want to talk to the people. So you come up with all these crazy ideas and uh, then is when you start creating these questions. And of course, you can start um, you know, asking more and uh, having more um, intense conversations about these sort of things. Because as I said, they are normally about things that are not available, things that are not, that do not exist necessarily, just imaginary things, things that you wish that were possible. Um, we have another example here. Shouldn't the government limit the types of websites allowed on the internet? So it's like, you know, for us, I think it's not something that we wish that we had nowadays. Um, it may be 
used to be something that people were talking about back in the day. But nowadays, I think this topic will be very tricky to touch base on because, you know, talking about how the government can limit the kinds of websites you can you can you can access. Um, many people will get very touchy by that because people, you know, we love to have our freedom and we love to, we love to have access to what we want. So I think this will be very, very tricky nowadays. Or would you like would you guys like the government to have control over what you're looking at? What do you think? Would you like to be watched over as people in China? No. <laughs> no, right? Who here would like to uh to provide the government access to see what you're looking at? Me personally, I wouldn't. I mean, I would never. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. It would be very, very tricky, you know. To but see I them. think it's worse in North Korea. <laughs> the yeah, access is right. so limited. Yeah, that's right. And how they believe that they have been um world champions so many times. I think that North Korea uh or the president or the regime has said that they have been um FIFA world champions six times in the last um in the last World Cups. Because, you know, people don't have access to the information. People don't know anything apart from what they want you to know. Um, and it would be very, very sad, in my opinion, to live a situation like that. So that's why I would never, you know, like to grant my um, permission or my access to the government. Because that would be sort of mind controlling sort of thing. But yeah. Now, the last one. Don't you think a lot of people are being confused by misinformation on the internet? Okay, so here is a question that I do want to get to hear your perspectives on. So don't you think that a lot of people are being confused by misinformation on the internet? What do you guys think? Um, let's go back a few years and uh, think about the times when the pandemic was just getting started. Did you ever got to got to read any um sort of like misinformation news or misinformation content? Let's see, maybe from you, from from Luis. In your case, Luis, when the pandemic was just getting started, did you ever see a news that later came out to be um false or fake news? Excuse me, teacher. Can you repeat? Yes, um, we're talking about like misinformation or like false information on, on the internet. So when the pandemic started, do you remember if you ever read something about, um, you know, about the illness and how that later became um, false? Uh, uh, I really remember that in that uh, in that time we we knew about this about this hmm? but uh, the the information uh, was not false for me it was truth all right but um, I think that, for example, uh, many people, and I may include, you know, people related to me, um, got to believe things that I think they didn't necessarily have to do at all with um, the whole pandemic thing. Because, for example, um, I remember that I saw some people around here in my neighborhood that they were buying tons of onions because they said that placing onions on the corner of your houses was going to prevent, you know, the, the COVID thing to enter the home. And it garlic like, too. <laughs> see, see. So yeah, it's like many people thought it was true. And uh, that, I think most of that information came from the internet, you know, came from people sharing um, posts on Facebook or any other website or any other um, social media platform that wasn't necessarily true that was yeah. information that you know at the end uh, was proven to be false and it was just misinformation as they call it because yeah people sometimes they just don't read they just get you know the first thing and like they just believe it straight on so in my perspective 
I think that misinformation through the internet is very common. As for example, those of you guys who know Auron Play and how many memes he has had to, you know, to to fight against, like how many times he has been called a terrorist, how many times he has been called um, so many bad things. And he's not either of them. It's simply just because he has one bad picture and he has been called all the things. So, you know, it's it's it. misinformation is very complicated and it can get just get us into a lot of problems. So be careful with that. Be careful with the internet and be careful with the news, you know, that you get. But well, um, something that you do not have to be careful with is going to bed because now you can go to bed. <laughs> you can enjoy, you know, how cool it yeah. might be. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing night and uh, you have an amazing weekend. So let's see uh, one another on Monday. So have a good one and see you Monday. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for